Ciao friends! In this video we will talk about the index that Power BI and Analysis Services can create for text columns when you use functions like search and contains string in DAX that are used by the feature contains in the filter pane when you apply a filter in the filter pane over a text column using contains or when you use a specific visuals like Smart Filter Pro which internally use that feature. Now, the problem of this feature is that when you apply this search in a column that has many, like millions of unique values, you might have a performance problem. But in October 2022, Microsoft released a feature, uh, an automatic index that actually speed up these queries a lot. However, uh, this feature can have some limitation. It can only apply to ASCII columns and there is a cost for the initial creation of the filter that is uh, good to know how we can detect so that we can correctly evaluate the performance of a query before thinking that the, the feature, the presence of this feature is actually slowing down the performance of the report while in reality it is uh, speeding up all the following executions. So let's start with the demo. So let's start with a simple report that I created in advance to show the demo of this feature. And we see here a uh, sales amount by brand, a visualization of sales amount by brand. We have a slicer in the visualization. This slicer is a Smart Filter Pro that just make it easier to dynamically change the filter and see the result. But conceptually, the slicer I'm creating here is identical to a slicer I could have, uh, for example, in uh, the filter pane. So if you look at the filter pane, when you use a name contains and you write a string, you have the same feature that you can have in a Smart Filter Pro, which means that we look for any string in the customer name column that has a particular content. For example, if I write Marco, if I type Marco, you see that any name that includes Marco is included in the list. Let's write Alberto. Let's see if there is some Alberto here. And we have also Alberto included in the names. Now you can also use uh, wildcard. For example, I could write sim star s, which means, uh, which means that I include all the names that have uh, any character between sim and then an s. So Simpson, Simmons, Simpsons, and so on. You can see the list here. Now, why are we doing this? Because we know that this filter could be particularly expensive. For example, if I repeat, if I analyze with the performance analyzer, the performances of this visualization, when I hit refresh, you see that in the matrix, which is the, the visualization we have here, this matrix has the filter applied. So even though we don't see the list of the customer names, this filter has a price. Indeed, the DAX query has almost, has more than one second of execution time. So, if we copy the query and we look at what is happening, so let's open Duck Studio and paste the syntax here. We, I already enabled the server timings and query plan. I clear the cache on run and I run the query. So we can see the execution time at this point. We have, I think after a couple of seconds, we have the result. So it's taking too long. So let me reset the execution. Okay, let's try again. Let's run this again. And we have the result finally. Here we go. So we had to wait a little bit more than I expected, but uh, at the end we have the, uh, the server timings. Now you notice that this execution time is particularly expensive. And if we look at the operation that is executed internally to the storage engine, we have this execution that includes a callback data ID. We can see this better highlighted this. What does it mean? The function used by the filter using contains in the filter pane or in Smart Filter Pro is a um, feature that uses the search function in uh, DAX. And this search function is not uh, uh, known by the storage engine, so the storage engine requires a callback to the formal engine. Now, the very same operation would happen if we used, in our DAX measure, the contains string function. 
All the details of these uh, functions supported and not supported are included in the article. My goal, again, is uh, to focus on uh, how the index works to improve this, uh, um, this execution. Now, the problem in this case is that we know that there is an index that could be created by the engine to improve the performance of this uh, execution, but this index is not created in this case. Why? Because this column, the column name in the customer table, includes values that have uh, non-ASCII uh, non uh, characters. Let me go back to the visualization in data view of the customer table. So this is the customer table. The content of the customer table, in particular for the name column, is uh, available here. And you see that even just one name, one string in a table that has millions of rows, that includes uh, diacritics, like uh, the characters we see in this example that I highlighted, or any character that is non-ASCII, we not generate an index. So the column is known by the engine as a column that includes non-ASCII characters and the index is not applied. So in order to uh, be able to leverage the index and obtain a better execution plan, now in this case one second could be good enough, but you might have situation where because you have more data or because you have uh, the same execution repeated multiple times, uh, this will impact your report in a more significant way. In this particular case, just to give you an idea, I'm using a table that has uh, 1.5 million customers and we have around 1 million of unique names. So this is the, the, the data volume we have. Probably when you have just 1,000 unique strings in the column, you will never see a real issue for that. Even though there is another important element, because let me go back to the Studio. Because we are using a callback data ID, this means that every time this uh, measure is executed, it has to be executed by the storage engine and the formula engine again. The storage engine cache, sorry, by the storage engine again. The storage engine cache is not applied when you have a callback data ID. And the reason why we can see that in Power BI the performance is good enough uh, the second time we retrieve the data using the same filter is because Power BI has another filter, another cache at the report level that doesn't repeat the same query multiple times if you have the same parameters. But every time you change the filter, you have to wait the time for executing the call by data D. The cache is not applied. If you have multiple users, the cache is not, the cache is not applied. So we know that there is a cache available. So let's see what we can do to implement this cache. So because we know that the cache is available only for ASCII columns, columns that contains only ASCII strings, we can create a version of the column like I did in this case. You see that this column has been generated in this case by using M, by using this expression in M. That is an expression that I found, and I show you the link, I found in a blog post uh, written by Chris Webb, and I think that the link is actually, this is the blog post about the text index that I'm describing, and I think that this is the link that explains how to implement the function in M that I'm explaining. You can use any technique, of course, but the idea is that if we make sure that the column only has ASCII strings, then we can enable the creation of the index. So let's try to figure out, because how can we make sure that the index is used? That this could be important because, uh, as I said, in a small model, you might have good performances, but you want to know what will happen once we have more data in the same table. So let's explore that. So now, if I go back to Power BI, and I, so we can close this one, we can go back to Power BI here, and I go back to the report. At the moment, my customer name is, uh, my customer's na name slicer is, is, uh, is tied to the customer name, here we go, ah, sorry, to the customer name column. It disappears too quickly, but the customer name column is the column connected here. So I created another page where I included the customer name ASCII column. So in this case, the visualization is connected to the customer name ASCII column that I created 
in M. And now we can see what is the execution plan for this execution. So if I uh, collect the query executed here, let me execute this again. I go to the matrix, I copy the query, and I paste the query in Duck Studio. I just execute the query again. So let's see if I can stop this for some reason is still running okay so server time is ready i'm clear on the cache on run and you notice that this is lower than uh, what i was expected i mean i was expected a faster execution now i spent six seconds instead of one so it seems that this is not going well but before uh, concluding that this is not working let's examine what is happening again first of all you notice that we have the formula engine that spent a lot of time before the storage engine execution. And remember that I used the clear cache on run, so I'm always clearing the cache of the storage engine before executing this query. The time we see here is actually the time required to create the index. So the index is created on demand the first time a query uses that column. If I show the content of the XM SQL code generated, you can see that we have a search function that is not included in a callback data ID. So technically, this is not exactly a, a, an XM SQL function, but it's still a function that is implemented in a way that is very efficient. You don't have to pay the price of an entire callback to the formula engine. So the execution is more efficient first. Second, the result of this query can be cached. So the difference is that now, if the second time, if I disable clear cache on run, and I run this query again, you see that now the execution has been almost immediate. And why this? Because uh, the execution has been retrieved by the cache, from the cache. We can see that uh, the number of storage engine queries retrieved by the cache is equal to two. And actually, these are the two scan events that have been both executed from the cache. So if we enable cache and internal, you can see that the scan used the data from the cache. This is what you should do to make sure that you are using the index. You should see that the function search, which is the same function also if you use uh, um, contain string index, this is the internal XM SQL function that is consuming the index, and the presence of this function in the XM SQL code tells you that the search in this column, which is customer, sorry, which is customer name ASCII, is made by using the index. So this is the, the key. So also in a small model, we can detect whether the index is created and used or not by doing this analysis. But remember, it could be dangerous to always execute clear on run because uh, at first sight, it seems that it is slower than the other technique, but actually it is slower only for the first user. All the following queries will get this executed much faster. Now, you will find many more details in the article because there are, of course, other considerations about the casing, about the uh, function supported, not supported, side cases. My goal was to show you in an interactive way how to detect that the index is created and consumed, and so you can evaluate whether in your model this is applied or not. Remember that the index is created at the first query. We cannot create the index in advance, so if it is critical to avoid the first user to wait too much, you might think about sending a query to the dataset or to the database just after the refresh, just to make sure that the index is created. It's not sure 100% if you have Power BI that the index will be kept in memory because the index could be removed if the dataset is evicted from the memory because you have other datasets running. But depending on the, on the workload of your, of your database, you might try to control that, especially in Power BI. Whereas in uh, analysis services, this is not an issue because the, the database uh, is uh, in memory until you run the next refresh or the next uh, backup and restore. So we have seen that this index is very useful to speed up the performances of a contains uh, search in the filter pane or 
of uh, equivalent searches made with slicers like the Smart Filter Pro we have seen in the demo. For all the details, I suggest you to read the article, which is much longer, contains also demos that you can download and you can try on your PC how to identify the column that is ASCII, non-ASCII, and see the differences in the performance. We used in the video a much bigger model because we wanted to show the difference in performance, in timing, but the behavior at the XM SQL level will be visible also with the small sample model. In the article, you will find also many more details about um, how the feature is supported, uh, which functions of DAX support it, which functions do not, um, details about the case sensitive, case insensitive behavior. By the way, the index created is case insensitive and only supports uh, the search functions that are uh, case insensitive. And so in the article, you will see many more details. But the goal was to make you aware of how this feature works. And as usual, enjoy DAX! <laughs>